just when I think I'm done with Surly, they come out with a banger of a bike that just pulls me back in. Today, I'm going to review the Dirt Drop specific Ghost Grappler, find out what I like and dislike about it in this video. Welcome back, Pathless Peddlers, and if you're new to the channel, we're all about the non-competitive side of cycling, so if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button. Ghost Grappler falls in that drop bar mountain bike category, for lack of better terms, built specifically around those curly bars, fat meats, super capable. In Surly's words, they call it their dedicated drop bar trail bike. They designed it for bike packers that wanted drop bars, but with a more dirt oriented geometry. This bike definitely has fatter meats and a slacker front end for a little bit more swoopy mountain bikey handling. Secondly, they envision this bike for people that ride single track regularly, but kind of want to spice it up. Sometimes too much suspension can be a bad thing, especially if you have relatively tame trails around you. They become sort of boring, but with a bike like this, it adds a little bit of spiciness, reintroduces some difficulty that makes those kind of quote unquote boring trails fun again. Let's talk about the frame and fork. Being surly, it is 100% steel, 100% chromoly, pretty modern standard, so through axle, disc brakes, and all the mounts. It's got three pack mounts. You could run a front randonneuring rack if you wanted, as mounts for a rear rack, as well as fenders. Tire clearance on this bike is a very squishy 27.5 by 2.8 tire. Can we appreciate that those are some pretty big meats? Or you can also run it with 29 by 2.1 inch tires. This build specifically comes in with the Terravail A-Line tires that measure in at about 2.5. So absolutely great choice on tires. The rotors on this bike are 180 and 160. I rode the bike primarily unloaded and it had enough stopping power for me. It might be nice to size up to a bigger rotor if you are going fully loaded. Looking at the controls of the bike, this is where things get really interesting. First off, the shifters are Microshift Advent X. Absolutely love this group set and I run it personally on my titanium bike. It's just that good. Some people hate the external routing of the brifters, but they're just super functional. The drivetrain has a 32 tooth chainring in the front and 11 to 48 in the rear. So out of the box, you know, Surly got the low gearing right for a bike like this. It's nice to see that it comes with a 32 tooth instead of like a 38 or 40 which makes no sense on bike packing bikes, in my opinion. Another cool feature is that the left shifter actuates a dropper post. That's right, out of the box, you don't have to hack anything. You've got shifting on the right and a dropper on the left. Perhaps the only other bike which I think got this much right in the spec build was the Tumbleweed Stargazer. So it's nice to see a bigger brand like Surly, actually think about how the bike's gonna be used and nail the spec. And so now let's talk about the handlebar, which for me, might be the only thing that I actually don't like about this bike, and it is the Salsa Wood Chipper, which is a dirt drop design. If you've never used dirt drops, they can be very Marmite, to say the least. They flare out really wide at the bottoms, but tend to be fairly narrow at the top. And because of the angles, the, sh the brifters are usually angled in. In my experience, it's hard to get it set up right where you both have a usable on the hoods position as well as a position that feels good in the drops. Typically, I usually set it up low so the hoods feel good or raise the bars up higher so the drops become the primary position. I don't wanna to get too bogged down about the handlebar at the moment. Let's talk about how the bike rides and we'll come back to that point. So the Ghost Grappler has a pretty modernish geometry. It's built around the whole concept of a long top tube shorter stem, fairly slack head tube angle at 69.5. The calculated trail with the A-lines is about 81. In my experience, if you have a trail that high and you're using road length stems, so 80, 90, 100, it, it tends to feel pretty floopy, floppy, and super sluggish in the front. But because it is designed to have a shorter stem, it brings a lot more life to the front end and it doesn't feel like a boat rudder. All that to say that the front end feels fairly neutral. It doesn't feel like a sloopy, flappy, progressive mountain bike when you're climbing. And speaking of climbing, I think this is where the bike shines, quite surprisingly. It has a fairly tucked chainstay at 425, even with the big tires, which translates to a really playful, really jumpy bike in the rear. I think this tuckness also adds traction when you're riding on the steeps. The tires don't spin out as easily because you're directly on top of them. And it just makes for a really responsive bike. This bike is not light, but taking it uphill, it feels a lot lighter than what the numbers would tell you. Going downhill, the bike is an absolute blast. Plenty of stability in the front end, 
lots of suppleness from the tires. It's a bike that needs more body English when going around corners, but super duper fun on the trails we have in Missoula. Might be a little bit overkill if you're just riding a kind of regular gravel roads, but if you do run into trail, this is where the bike comes into its own. So if you can't tell, I really, really like this bike. I think this bike is to mountain bikes in Surly's lineup like the Midnight Special was to road bikes in their lineup, if that makes sense. Really interesting geometry, like a dialed back chamois Hagar, kind of similar vibes to the Sharon cycles I really enjoyed. Definitely more off-road worthy than something like the Canyon Grizzle. So yeah, love the geometry, love the handling. Another thing I really like about this bike is the component choice. I think Surly did a great job at providing lots of functionality for the money. You get a drop bar mullet without breaking the bank. You get nice and big supple tires. You get a dropper post that's actuated by the shifter. There's actually not a whole lot I would change about this bike right off the bat. If there's anything I would change, you know, any stock bike could benefit from lighter wheels. But other than that, well, there is one thing which we'll get to, but other than that, pretty dang good. And of course, you guys know I love utility in bikes and this bike has it in spades with the rear rack mounts, the three pack mounts, as well as mounts for fenders. And did I mention the price? MSRP is $18.99. And while not being a cheap bike, it's hard to get a bike designed like this and spec'd out like this for a lot less. So I know what you're thinking, it can't be all sunshine and roses. What are the cons? First big con, this shouldn't be a surprise, is the weight. It is kind of a hefty bike, but for the price and what this bike is trying to do, I'm totally willing to overlook that. Probably the biggest con to me is the choice to go with a uh, dirt drop style handlebar. They're not my favorite. Yes, they get really wide and stable in the drops, but I just don't like how narrow they are on the hoods and also the angle that they want to put the brifters in. The bike I reviewed came with the wood chippers, which are the dirt style drops. The spec sheet I'm looking at over here says it's gonna come with cow chippers, which is a little bit more of a, a normal style drop. I'm not quite sure which is which at this point, but if it does come with cow chippers, then I think it would be a near perfect bike. But if it does finally ship with the wood chippers, that would probably be the one thing I would change. Another pro tip is if you are buying this new at your local bike shop, and it does come out with the wood chippers. I'd have them leave the steerer tube a little bit tall just so you can get used to where you want the wood chippers. Again, kind of tricky to fit. I think there, there might be a reason why they're not more popular than they are. But overall, a great bike, good value from Surly, smartly spec'd out, love the handling. Would be ideal for bike packing, especially if you like drop bars or if you want to spice up the local trails in your area or if you're like us, and you have lots of gravel roads that also shoot off into trails. It makes for a super fun and versatile dirt road and dirt trail explorer where you don't know where exactly you're gonna end up. But that's what I think. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments. And if you like this review, consider supporting the channel by joining us on Patreon or buying some merch. Yes, the bike was sent in by Surly to review, but I am not getting paid by Surly. I've already sent the bike back. I spend hundreds of hours every year doing unpaid uh, reviews and it's only made possible by channel supporters. So check out all those links below and as always, keep the supple side down.